hi everybody and a big welcome to a cdhtv gameplay once again this time we have with us rhetoric hey guys and samurai yo and the pontus and me are here as usual this is polyractos new i was looking at the uh the big eldrazi but it's just not good <laughs> like 90 percent of the time so i decided to try out a new uh a new card in polyractos uh it's just go fast if you're not first you're last so atraxa has been taking down a couple of tournaments lately or placed well in them so i'm revisiting the deck to see how it plays and yeah it's just the non-red nos stormy stuff with Fuji. morph deck here today i'm doing five color Nijila with a kitten and a dinosaur. So this is just a little experimental approach to polymorph stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But essentially, um, I got to try to make sure that kitten and dinosaur get onto the battlefield and then can start going from there. And me, I'm playing my Yeleva Grixis Lobotomy deck that is trying to control stacks, board wipe. There's no win cons in the entire deck. There's just stacks and a lot of it. And then eventually I win with Najela, removing opponent's libraries from the game. It will take forever. In any case, let's take a look at some opening hands. This is pretty sweet. Got a little bit of interaction. Oh, we've already got the Divergent in hand. I'm not really super excited about this Lion's Eye Dime, but maybe it will come in use down the road. Who knows? Um, but at the very least, we could even just cast it if we were able to get uh, Displacer Kitten and Itali onto the pitch at some point so yeah i think I, I got two lands i've got dual lotus get najila out on turn one and then force of will and miscast and if i draw more blue you know maybe i can hold up on both of those we'll see so let's just keep it go ahead pontus so this hand is pretty copium and pretty good at the same time do i keep it no i think i'm one land from being able to keep this because what we could do is Early Tutor for a Esper Sentinel to enable our Mox Opal, which also is a perfectly fine draw engine. But since we can't really establish the Esper Sentinel turn 2 and the Sol Ring before turn 3, I don't really like this hand. I think it's a bit too slow. Uh, we have a couple of draws that would be like really good for us, but they're not that many. This is the first 7, so let's make another try. No lander. <laughs> uh, so we do not get more lands. Yeah, no. Not keeping this as a no-lander. Go to six. So I added Mox Opal just before recording this. And I'm starting to regret it. This is just land pass, kind of. Uh, so we can really tutor for probably like a birds. And that's a turn three Notion Thief. Spellseeker probably just gets a like tutor. No, I, I don't really like this. Uh, you could keep this. It's not the worst hand I've ever seen. Uh, so let's go deep. This one isn't great. It's fine enough to keep on a 5. Hopefully we draw a land or maybe even a um, another artifact for 0. That would be kind of good because that is a turn 1 twist. Yeah, we didn't really get there. I think our first 7 was the best hand so far. But, <laughs> but none of them has been that great. Well, I think this is better than a potential. Uh, the potential 4 would kind of have to be like land, crypt, something. Probably it's to be better. So I'm keeping this 5. Putting away the Mnemonic Betrayal and probably the Felwer Stone or Elves. I'll have to decide about between them. Go ahead, Samurai. It's a Gemstone, but it's three mana on turn one. We won five. We can hit it. So let's go to our second seven. Our second seven, same problem as the first. We can Demonic to get a Medic Crypt. Turn two, play him. Not good enough. Uh, our six is Mox two. Not good enough. Here we're starting to see it. This is our five. Put back the Mox Diamond, put out a defense grid, a monolith. Nah, we can go down to four. Oh, heck yeah. That's the one I want. Yes, 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 yes. Now we're going to put this on the bottom. I am going to start and I'm going to draw a card. Oh, that turned great. Let's uh, shock this Blood Crypt into play and take two damage. I definitely did not top deck this Ragavan. And uh, here I pass the turn. Good for Polymorph. Let's just say that. Okay, take my turn. Draw a card for turn. I'm going to do Fire Islet, Jeweled Lotus. I will sacrifice Jeweled Lotus, cast Najila. That's it. Go ahead. I no longer hate my starting hand. Cast this Mana Crypt. <laughs> I think you can guess which card I drew of that information. Cast a Lotus Battle. Cast a Mox Opal. 
tap mana crypt for a Felwar stone. Onkers. Tap Felwar stone, tap Mox Opal, sacrifice Lotus Battle. Don't, don't. Yes, cast yes, this yes, time yes. twister. <laughs> Yes! No. <laughs> Good. Uh, Pontus, I love you. Uh, me too. <laughs> Miss Cass. Eh. Pass turn. Play an Aaron Mesa, crack it. So disappointed in you. I'll cast Rograk, Jeweled Lotus, Lotus Petal, Tavish Zot. Hey, you know what? Rograk can go back to the command zone. <laughs> One, two, three. Woo! That's how you do it. I'm up and draw a card. I'm gonna play this Riptide. Laboratory as a land drop. Combat, I'm attacking with my Ragavan at Nayila. Rhetoric. No blocks. Exile top. Right? Okay. I took one damage while I, I Enlightened Tutor. I make a treasure. I am uh, not going to use the Enlightened Tutor. That can go away and I pass the turn. And I'm adding insult to injury by moving to combat. And I will sweat, send Najila as well as the warrior make, I'm making from that at Tabesh. Tap and attacking. Uh, yep, I have no other effects. I will pass turn if that's good. Go to my turn. Untap, upkeep, roll of crypt, odds damage, rolled a five. Uh, so I take three, draw a card. I'll tap mana crypt to cast a talisman of dominance. Then I will tap three to cast a laboratory maniac last card in hand. And if that's good, I'll pass the turn. That is honestly a really good Ragavan blocker. I know, right? Play an Ancient Tomb, Pontus. Who loves you, baby? Wheel of Fortune. One, two, three. Okay. You know, I don't know. I'll ask you directly, Pontus. So you had a comment earlier that like countering a, um, a, a sort of wheel is not recommended. Tell me why you think that is. No, like it very much depends on the context. Okay. So if you counter wheel, you lose that counter to like the next person. Sure. It's also the fact that, that you have to weigh your hand versus the potential hand you get from the wheel. Especially in cases like this, when you're the one untapping like next. Basically, you lose you, you lose the counter for, fu for the future. You lose the possible counters from your opponents and you lose the potential gas you would get. There are like the downsides are the like obvious ones. Like your opponents get to draw 20, 21 cards or whatever and everything. But like they also are drawing those against each other. So like a wheel just speeds the whole game up in general. Interesting. The logic. You can yeah, also yeah. Me... talk view it like this, like who is benefiting the most from the wheel and who is suffering the most from the wheel. Or no, no one is really suffering from the wheel, but who are you viewing as the hit by biggest threat in this current situation? If you view Pontus as a threat, which I don't think you do, then you should counter the wheel because Pontus needs this wheel. The same thing with Samurai. Bods, you said you have no win conditions, so I don't know what that means. Grinding. It's actually a, a view you could say. Pontus made a very good uh, distinction about wheels. Wheels speeds up the game. I My deck don't like when the games are containing a lot of wheels because that speeds up the game. I want to slow down the game. As in my perspective, I don't want the wheel to happen, so to say. So again, once again, like if you view me as a threat, you should counter the wheel. So to... No, wait, if you don't view... Yeah, if you view me as a threat, you should let the re wheel resolve. Sorry, I said that wrong. Do you think you have a chance of beating me in like a current 1v1? Because Pontus is hellbent. Samurai yeah. is kind of... He needs this wheel, more or less. His hands are very low. So if go. this yeah. wheel resolves... And Pontus and S oh well, Samurai is actually not on counter spells, but Pontus could get counter spells so just to his hand. So to say. True. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking about my own hand as well. That gives you information. But I'm gonna pay a life pitch Mystic to force a will. Did you have the Remora? I was gonna get from Impulse. I had Impulse in my hand. Did you I, have yeah. the Force of Will in your hand? Yes, I did. Dude, you should have just played the Remora and kept the Impulse and Force. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna just make a uh, two thralls. Yeah. I'm like, why, why would you... It's... What is he doing? <laughs> the Remora was from Impulse. In the end step, I'm gonna do my own uh, wheel uh, private. I'm gonna sacrifice this treasure, tap 2, and cast Valakut Awakening. I wanna put my card back on the bottom and draw 5 cards. Now I have a new hand of 5, and I'll untap and draw a card. So we drew into Fasa's Hideous Laughter, which is a really fun spell, and I really wanna do it. I kind of really want to do it. Uh, however, 
it's not that good to fire it off the first thing you do, especially not when you have like other options here. So we have some really good options. We have Fun of Animatist and we have Opposition Agent. Currently right now we need to deal with Rhetoric because Rhetoric counterspelled that wheel. So I think Rhetoric values his hand really good. Taking his commander is good. Casting Fawn is good. So we have the man. Now, considering using Oppo Agent is also pretty good versus these, uh, everyone right now. But Fawn is a little bit more secured going to do something. Now, they have mana, but look at the amount of mana Rakdos deck has. It's only three or four when he gets to his six next turn, potentially. So I think Fawn will hurt everyone a tiny... Well, Pontus is Hellbent, so he doesn't really care. But I think we're going to go with more what I think is a safer play. The fun play would be Fasas, and I think the wrong play would be Opposition Agent. Combat. I'm attacking yeah. at uh, you, Rhetoric. You have no blockers. Your monkey gets through. Let's see. Drum roll. Model the mixture. I'm not going to cast Model the mixture. That one can go to exile. I will play this Bloodstained Mire and sacrifice it. I will find this Volcanic Island. I'm going to tap these two and cast a Grim Monolith. Tap this, Floating a Colorless, cast a Fawn. Thorn resolves. I will use the last remaining mana and cast a Gilded Drake. And I wanna swap positions with Nayela and Gilded Drake. No! Alright, that's fine. Yes! <laughs> okay, no problem. And here I pass the turn. Alright, Thief. Alright, more for pool. Uh, Severa, I'm gonna kill your Tevesh. Three damage in there. Alright, and after that, we've got one warrior up. Pass turn. Roll for crypt, also damage. Roll the one, take three. This card doesn't help me. I will pass the turn. Yeah, I guess we'll play a Scalding Tarn, crack it. Shuffle, tap two, get a rock rack. Pass our turn. Untap, and draw a card. I'm gonna send everything I have straight at Samurai. Creating a warrior that is also attacking at Samurai. Great, I'm not a life deck. There is no Nas in this build. You're the only one that doesn't really have blockers that will kill my Ragavan and stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm blocking yes. Ragavan. <laughs> I think I take, what, four? You take four. Time to do something fun. <laughs> We're gonna cost Fasas Hadia's laughter. <laughs> Sacrificing a treasure for it. And paying extra because of Fawn. Let's laugh! I wish I kept that force of will. <laughs> <laughs> I lost a good removal piece, a Psych Rift, Rhystic Study, Wish Claw, a Saw in Half, and a, a Polymorph card. So, yeah, like, lots of good little things that even Silence to interact with later. Uh, so I lost my Mystic Remora, my Pact, Notion Thief, Smiling Tithe, both of those are pretty good value engines. The Ranger Captain is pretty sad, and Op Agent. But nothing that bad, so that's nice. I only lost nine cards. And uh, of note is Necropotence, the Bolus of Citadel, the Jessica's Well and the Divergent. Like I said, this is not an ad nauseum deck. <laughs> and with that, I pass the turn. <laughs> Take my turn. How about this? If you attack Pontus, I give you a warrior. <laughs> you get... <laughs> I think I just pass. Move to my turn. Untap. Uh, roll of Crypt. All this damage. Roll the two, no damage. Draw for turn. Land for turn is the Windswept Teeth. We're getting there. Or I'll actually fetch, take damage, just to have that done. Finding a drop. I'm pass. Hey, let me try to be the first one to do this. And cast a reality scramble, targeting the thrall. That is very scary, and I... There we go! Yeah, that's what I wanted! Alright, Brainstealer Dragon is a uh, five colorless, two black pips, uh, Dragon Horde. 6-6 uh, six, six with flying. At the beginning of your instep, exile the top card of each opponent's library. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. Whenever a non-land permanent an opponent controls owns enters the battlefield under your control, they lose life equal to its mana value. So if I play a permanent of yours, you guys lose life equal to its mana. It's, it's super fun in Polymorph. I'd like to move to instep. Would everybody like to exile the top card of their library? From me, you get a Brainstorm. Morphy. Yes, lands! Medical. Yeah. I, need, I, I needed lands. <laughs> I will untap and draw a card. I will play this island. So, I don't have a good attack. Nayela or Ragavan will attack, die regardless of where I attack. 
But only one will die if I attack Pontus, so I'm gonna let Pontus decide. My Nayela is attacking Pontus, my Ragavan is attacking Pontus, my free tokens, because Nayela is going to generate more here, are all gonna go at Te Tevesh, that can only block and kill one here. So Ragavan dies, and I lose a warrior. I'm going to cast my awesome commander Nayeleva on x equals 4. So from myself I get Vandal Blast and a board wipe, from Rhetoric I get nothing, from Pontus I get an Imperial Seal and a get Axiom Probe, and from the Tevesh and the Samurai player I get a Shadow Smog and a Mystic's Mastery. Which means I can actually recast this thing next turn, that's kind of fun. <laughs> I passed the turn! <laughs> Alright, take my turn. This is gross! <laughs> I have nothing interesting to do. Yeah. I will untap, roll for crypt, hold this damage, roll the three, so take three damage. Then I will draw for turn. So since my Felwar Stone doesn't produce white mana currently, I'll just pass the turn. I'll pay two life, cast Reality Scramble with the retrace, discarding this swamp, targeting Rockrock. I pass, I'm ready for ne next uh, scary thing. Notable cards, Underworld Breaches on the bottom, as well as uh, Toxic Deluge and Yawgmon's Will. So, one of my favorite cards of all time, Siren Sandy, at the beginning of each instep, each player discards his or her hand. I excite an underground sea into your dragon. I will untap and draw a card. I'm gonna cause this ever-flowing chalice. X is one. Or, well, multicaster is one, so to say. Combat. I more or less need to attack Pontus to grow myself stronger. So, everything is coming at Pontus. I will generate three more tokens, so six tokens and an Angela and a uh, Yeleva is attacking. I'm causing the Mystic's Mastery that I've stolen, targeting my Fasas hideous laughter inside my graveyard. Now because of Torn I actually have to pay one for Mystic's Mastery and then one more for Fasas hideous laughter. Obvious key card is Displacer Kitten because that's part of my combo piece. So thanks very much, Mons. I hope you enjoyed the laugh. Also Adnaz and Deadly Rolex, things of that sort, but this is the big one. So I lost Stain Pact, which Oracle is kind of my main confirmation probably. So I also lost Kitten. I'm not that dedicated of the Kitten deck, but it's gone. And Yagwil is gone. Aetherflex Reservoir in my Sensei's Divining Top. Uh, you hit a Deadly Rolex, my Mana Crypt. You hit Professor Onyx, Defense Grid, which doesn't matter anymore. And a Demonic Tutor, which also doesn't matter anymore. But you, you hit my Professor Onyx, which you already have my Chain of Smog. This guy thinks he's funny, doesn't he? Pontus, you take 10 damage. And then I pass the turn. Race and beat him down a little bit, fellas. All right, three in the air at you, Mons. I take three. Roll of Crypts, all this damage. Roll the six, no damage. Draw for turn to cast this solary and then pass the turn. Draw. Take my underground seat, it's yours. A simple rock rack and attack wands in the air for six. Six. Card my hand and get three cards from you guys. From me, you will get a is it signet? Romantic reversal. Or starting ship. Woo! I will untap and draw a card. And if, uh, it seems like they are starting to attack me, which is the correct thing to do. I am the big threat or something of the big threat. Like eventually my Nayela will take over and uh, I'm basically removing their combos from the game. Seems like they gonna have a str I, don't, I think Pontus is still kind of capable of winning somehow down the line. However, we're getting beaten down by some really big creatures and a flying drake. In order to like prioritize how we're getting rid of each player, we're gonna use the key interaction against each one. Pontus is gonna be able to cast Atraxa on his next turn. We need to prevent him from doing that because once Atraxa comes into play, he gets into this game. Right now, he's just in top decking mode. So we're gonna use Vandal Blast so that Pontus can't on like his uh, Sol Ring. He can keep the Mana Crypt so he's slowly dying. But we're gonna try to prevent him from getting Atraxa because once Atraxa gets into play, Pontus becomes a huge problem. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with the Rakdos deck because in the end, that deck doesn't really produce that many creatures. And we have the Pursuit's solution to that. We have Warriors. He's basically on a clock. With Nayela and this amount, we have seven words, so we're gonna punch him really hard. And then Nayela at Pontus. And then we're gonna use Pyroblast in my hand to get rid of the Gilded Drake. With this, there are only two really big creatures that's gonna come and attack me. Actually, when I think about it, I'm gonna leave one warrior back so that I can block a Sire of Insanity if it's coming my way. With this strategy currently, 
down the line, we're winning uh, safely and effectively. Attacked Samurai, Daniela at Pontus, and Yeleva at Samurai, who doesn't have a flyer as well. Cast Vandal Blast and pay one extra for Fawn of Amnesist, destroying Pontus Soldering. Fierce Guardianship that. I'm gonna tap two and cast a Pyroblast on that. Uh, dispel. I have no further responses. Vandal Blast is ultimately Counterspell. I think I gotta block at least two of those. We'll let Rock Rack go to grave this time. One of them die and you take 11. No blocks for me. I take 11. Then I pass the turn. So I'll card for turn. I will go to combat and attack Mons for three in the air. The card would go on the top of my library, but it could be useful to... It's only a sorcery. It's a sorcery, it doesn't matter. It wouldn't matter to you anyways, right? All right, so I'm just going to discard this personal tutor and ship the turn. Go to my turn. All this damage, roll the four, no damage. Draw for turn. Leave one colorless floating, take one damage to cast an Atraxa. Atraxa will resolve, and I have an ETB where I look, reveal the top 10 cards in my library. I have this Oracle, Shina Vapor, Mana Vault, Diabolic Intent, Water Grave, Calling the Weak, Wish Claw, Rainforest, and Praetor's Grasp. So I will be keeping a Calling the Weak, a Mana Vault, a Toxic Luge, a Thus Oracle, and a Water Grave. Then I'd like to shock in this Water Grave, this Calling the Weak sacrificing my Atraxa. Make four black. I'll use the four mana to cast this Toxic Deluge paying four life. I'll pay six life. Then I pass my turn. Tainted Pact? Delta Exile into the Abyss. Yeah, we'll get this to hand. I'm gonna pass. A card. Pass the turn. You're cooking in this game, huh? Mission here, sponsored by HelloFresh. Order. <laughs> turn, and now I will pass the turn. How much mana are you able to produce this turn currently? Oh, this doesn't actually do anything because you do have the mana vault in your hand. I have a, a braid, if you're asking me what I'm talking about here. I can destroy his soul ring otherwise. Or just letting Samurai untap and cast a Pete on his turn and stopping me to do anything to maybe find an answer. I have no response for the peer coming next turn. And I especially don't if you hinder me from developing my commander. How many free to cast counter spells do you have still in your deck, Pontus? Because you're gonna be tapped out once you cast Atraxa. And we have exiled things have from you. One still left. Wait, you have one free to cast counter spells left in your deck. Yeah, but I can hit the land drop and mana. Yeah, that's true. You're probably gonna find a land. Is Tainted Pact and Consult removed from your deck, Pontus, by exile? Just Tainted Pact. Just Tainted Pact. So, so Consult is still in your deck and you have Fasas in your hand. Yes. How many cards are left in your library, Samurai? I have 53 cards. You have exiled three of my win cons. That's actually true. I don't know all the win cons you have, but how many fast men are left in your deck after casting Pierre? That is actually a good question. I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, do I actually even have win cons anymore? I'm like yeah. thinking about it. I'm like, I think you've killed my win cons. <laughs> yeah, because my Aether Flex is gone. Raid. The, the soldering from your Pontus. My thinking is this that I don't think the Samurai's peer is going to be that strong. And I I still think that you have a pretty solid game still, Pontus. So I am destroying the Sol Ring. Good, my turn. Roll, roll a three, take three. Draw for turn to cast a Mana Vault. Up to three to cast a Grimmon Lith. Pass turn. Two lands in the Brainstorm. I'm gonna tap two and Brainstorm. You cast my Brainstorm. Uh, brainstorm. Uh, one, two, three. Move to top of library. Move to top of library. Play a blast zone. Pass my turn. We're lobotomizing our opponents. Hey, I'm gonna cast this copy artifact. And I'm gonna make it enter as a copy of Felwarstone. Pass the turn. Just flush with life. So I'm gonna take two damage with Watery Grave. And then I'm just gonna pass turn. Untap. Up, roll is six. I'm alive now. Cast Atraxa. I have a Atraxa ETB on the stack. For being nurtured, other spirit guide, veil of summer, abrupt decay, <laughs> ancient tomb, food chain, bayou, consult, and the flooded strand. Now it feels like it was very much correct to abrade your artifact. So I'll take consult, food chain, and all of these goes to bottom of library. It's elvish spirit guide for green. Play for being nurtured. For being nurtured, I give rhetoric a spirit. 
for white to cast a Dranith. It's really cute because Dranith stops Force Negation from being castable because it's not in his hand, it's in his exile, or my exile. Dranith is also a creature that's exilable to, with Fuchin. So I will exile Dranith to Fuchin, making two blue or three blue to cast this Fimage. So Fimage will enter as an Atraxa. Sadly, I don't have priority before legend rule, so I can't actually exile any of them to food chain to make mana. But Fimage will be an Atraxa. Uh, I'll have an Atraxa trigger on the stack, and Fimage will go to graveyard due to legend rule. So Atraxa to B, number three. Wishclaw, Eternal Scourge, Whale of Summer, Mystery and Forest, Ancient Tomb, and Elf Sleep Shadow. Yeah, I'll keep Eternal Scourge, I'll keep Snap, Wishclaw, Ancient Tomb, and Sorcery, Diabolic Intense. Rest goes to bottom. So now I will exile Atraxa to Fujin. Eight blue, I guess. Use three of them to cast the Tonal Scourge. And unless there's any responses here, I can infinitely cast the Tonal Scourge from exile because I make one extra mana from Fujin each time I exile it. This makes infinite mana to spend only on creatures. So from infinite mana, I can infinitely recast my commander. And since she puts all the cards, I she will always put, always put cards in my hand. So if I cast infinitely, I'll just get all the cards from my deck into my hand, and then I'll cast the Tassel Oracle with my infinite creature mama to win the game. Good game. What can I say? Wheels are scary to me. They made other people scary. Good game, everybody. We were really close at actually winning that game, but uh, Toxic Deluge, pretty good card. If we'd gotten another round of people's top decks probably could have cleared the board. In all honesty, I love the way the deck played. At no point in time did I feel like I was on the back burner. Yeah, we won somehow, I guess.